Gotta go places, gotta see things. See new faces and brand new things. Gotta go places and do things. Maybe to forget it. What's up you guys, welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2022 Honda Passport, courtesy of Apple Honda in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so we are in this one today because there has been a refreshed look for the 2022 Passport. Of course, you also have legendary Honda reliability as well. And there's plenty of new standard features as well for the 2022 Passport board along with that so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering for ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are a few different trim levels for the 2022 passport first one being the exl starting at thirty eight thousand three hundred and seventy dollars then you have the new trail sport starting at forty two thousand nine hundred and seventy dollars and the elite which actually is the one we are in today starting at forty five thousand nine hundred and thirty dollars but regardless of the trim level that you go with the power plant on the new passport here will be the same powering the beast is a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated v6 putting out 280 horsepower at six thousand rpm 262 pound feet of torque coming in at 4700 rpm power sent to front wheels or all wheels through a nine speed automatic with pedal shifters which you guys know we will be testing out here in a little bit zero to 60 time get this coming in at a very impressive six seconds flat mpg numbers coming in at 20 in the city 25 on the highway for the front wheel drive and that front wheel drive by the way is only available for the exl in case anybody was curious about that but then 19 in the city 24 then on the highway for the all wheel drive taking regular regular unleaded fuel and so before we do any kind of fun paddle shifter or acceleration test here in our passport did want to mention to you guys the driving modes and so there's a little suv like logo directly behind the shift buttons there that's going to be what you're going to want to press for the drive modes they will include normal snow mud sand sport and then econ as well and the econ button's located by the driver's left knee by the way but anyways all of those drive modes adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response the steering sensitivity the climate control settings and the all-wheel drive system engagement then as well it's up and now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and put it in sport driving mode first I don't think I mentioned but all you do for the sport driving mode is press that D slash S button and it immediately downshifts for me like it just did giving me more power on demand holding the rpms at a much higher level so that is pretty cool and that's also another way you can get it in that full manual shift mode there as well so anyways Having now rambled off all of that stuff, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put the paddle shifters here to the test first, and let's see how quickly they are going to react for us here. All right, you guys, so I think what we're going to do here is we're going to do the paddle shifter and acceleration test here at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and downshift in second gear, in first gear. All right, here's our spot. We're in first gear in three, two, one, go. Wow. Okay, they're not bad. Actually, not bad. Paddle shifters, move squirrel. Paddle shifters are not bad. Not the quickest things in the world, of course, but again, they're not bad. And the other thing you can use paddle shifters for as we're going down this hill here is if it were to be snowing here in Pennsylvania, I could use the paddle shifters to do a little bit of engine braking. So as opposed to actually hitting the brakes and risk sliding off the road, I could simply just downshift and let the engine do a little bit of the braking for me. So it's a little bit of a safety feature having those paddle shifters. But having said that, the acceleration was incredibly quick. Zero to 60 in six seconds. It feels like that. This is plenty of an acceleration to merge you onto the highway. Really for an SUV of this size, it's a plenty of an acceleration so no complaints from me whatsoever but anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so up front you will find 12.6 inch ventilated front discs in the back 13 inch solid rear discs as far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes it's actually going to commit at an even 130 feet having said that braking feel feels perfectly natural here in the passport i'll put it that way it's pretty much as i expected it's not a firm braking feel but it's not a loose braking feel either it's not a squishy braking feel it actually feels perfectly fine. I guess that's what I'm trying to say here. But anyways, the touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're going to get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, I actually watched a review on the Passport just uh, a couple days ago. And they said the ride quality is a little bit on the firmer side of things. But i got to be honest, I kind of disagree. I felt firm ride qualities in my past 700-ish reviews. 
And this isn't it. This is perfectly fine. I've had no issues with the ride quality whatsoever. So it's definitely absorbing Pennsylvania's road imperfections quite nicely. I mean, it doesn't have an adaptive suspension. It doesn't have an air suspension. I didn't expect it to. That, of course, will give it a much smoother ride. But it's as I expected. And it's soaking up, like I said, soaking up the road imperfections perfectly fine. So no issues there, at least for me. Touching on steering feel, I like it. It's a little bit on the heavier side of things, but it's definitely not a loose steering feel. So I think it's perfect for the Passport. Honda did a really good job with the steering feel as well. Touching on cabin noise, I am going 10 miles per hour right now. So there isn't a whole lot of exterior wind noise whatsoever coming into the cabin. But when I was going a little bit faster on the highway there, again, it's perfectly fine. Definitely didn't have any issues there either. And touching on visibility, I could see perfectly fine out the back actually. I've had no issues with the visibility whatsoever. Looking out my rear view mirror, those second row headrests aren't really getting in the way at all either, which is sometimes the case in SUVs, so no issues there. And if you were to go with the Elite trim level like we have today, you will also get rain sensing windshield wipers then as well. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022. Honda Passport. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2022 Honda Passport finished in radiant red metallic, in case anybody was curious of our exterior color name. Definitely a very nice looking color to this one, but let's go ahead and start up front. Of course, you do have a revised front end for the 2022 model year. Definitely a very nice look to it, and that includes the front grille, includes the headlight housings, and the entire front fascia all together, basically, but Anyways, to the sides, LED low beam headlights do come standard. LED daytime running lights coming standard with that as well. Automatic feature, of course, meaning when it starts to get dark at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. But automatic high beams actually also coming standard for all trim levels across the board, meaning when you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's going to automatically dim those back to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's going to automatically bounce them back up to high beams. So definitely a very nice safety feature in itself there. Down below Below, LED fog lights coming with the Trail Sport and Elite trim levels. So you guys can see that we have those there today. And to the sides, we'll actually find front air curtains helping direct air around the wheel tire combination as well. But overall, definitely like the refreshed look for the 2022 Passport, but that pretty much rounds out the front end of this one. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of the Passport, roof rails do come standard on the Trail Sport and elite trim levels, so they're not gonna come on that EXL. So I wanted to mention that rear privacy glass coming standard across the board, of course, you will find black window surrounds for all trim levels as well. There is a little bit of a floating roof line finished in black. You guys can see that on the C pillar of the Passport in the back there. Body colored power adjustable side mirrors for the EXL. Otherwise, you will get gloss black side mirrors for the Trail Sport and Elite trim levels like you're looking at right now. Heated side mirrors though do come standard with LED integrated turn signals as well. Also reverse gear tilt down feature coming standard for every single trim level across the board. You usually don't find that on bottom trim. So big fan of that as well. You're gonna have some matte black side skirts and fender surrounds of course. And taking a look at the wheel setup, you will find 20 inch pewter gray alloys for the EXL. 18 inch machine finished alloys for the trail sport and then 20 inch machine finished alloys for the elite and of course again that is what you guys are looking at right now but pretty much rounds out the side profile here let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right, and so but now since we are around to the back of this one, body colored shark fin antenna all the way to the top, body colored rear spoiler with an integrated brake light also coming standard across the board, rear window wiper, of course, you will find some trim level badging found on the right side of that rear tailgate. So in case you're wondering onto a Honda lot on maybe a Sunday and you were curious what trim level you were looking at, that is one surefire way to go ahead and tell. LED taillights actually do come standard for all trim levels across the board as well. And perhaps my very favorite part of the Passport, you guys know I like exposed exhaust outlets, but these exhaust outlets are kind of on the massive side, which I am absolutely a fan of. I love that look. But anyways, dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So but now since we are around to the back of the Passport, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a power tailgate for every single trim level across the board. So there's actually a button on the tailgate itself towards the bottom, simply just press that, it's gonna automatically open up for you. It's also a button on the key fob as well, but I will say if you go with the Elite trim level, it is a hands-free 
power tailgates. All you need to do is simply kick your foot underneath of the back there and it's gonna automatically open up, let's say if your hands are full. So that's a pretty cool feature too, but once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 41.2 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 77.7 .7 cubic feet. And by the way, there's a couple buttons located in the cargo area to actually fold down those seats pretty easily if you wanted to go that route. So did like seeing that. Cargo lining, of course, can be found back there. There's some grocery bag hooks. There's some little bit of uh, indented storage on both sides as well. There's four cargo tie-down anchors, which is pretty cool, and 12-volt power outlet and if you were to lift up under that floor of the cargo area, you will actually find some in-floor storage and a decent amount of it as well. So you could put maybe an ice scraper or a tire inflator kit or something like that back there. So definitely a big fan of seeing that. Then making our way up to the rear legroom that comes in at 39.6 inches. So for reference, I mean even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Rear ventilation does come standard, but not just that. Tri-zone climate control coming standard, meaning rear passengers can set their own temperature back there as well rear charging ports and that includes two USB charging ports for the rear passengers and actually a 115 volt power outlet back there as well which is pretty cool to see. Heated rear seats coming for the elite trim level only so we do have those today. Rear center armrest with cup holders of course coming standard and if you were to go with the trail sport or elite trims you're actually going to get rear window sunshades back there as well which is always handy if you have maybe a newborn coming home from the hospital or just young kids in general you want to keep the sun out of their eyes you have rear window sunshades back there so always a big fan of that but then making our way up to the front seats power adjustable leather seating for every single trim level across the board and that includes power lumbar by the way as well you're gonna get some orange contrast stitching with that if you were to go with the trail sport trim level heated front seats coming standard for all trim levels yet again you will also get though ventilated front seats for the elite trim that we have here today two position memory settings are going to come standard on all trim levels across the board so if you have two different drivers that is going to definitely help you out there and overall seating was plenty comfortable i didn't have any issues finding my perfect driving position or anything like that but now take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it did telescope out a decent amount it is leather wrapped for every single trim level across the board definitely a big fan of that you're going to get some orange contrast stitching yet again for the trail sport trim level it's going to be a common theme by the way and it's going to be heated if you were to go with the elite trim level that we have with us here today but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here you do have your honda logo on the one side then when you flip it over lock unlock the button to pop the rear tailgate there and that circular button that says hold that is going to be a remote start coming standard across the board ultimately it is all keyless entry with a push button start so all i'm going to do here is simply put my foot of the brake and press that bright red engine start button located just by the driver's right knee and so once started up the majority of this gauge cluster is going to be a digital form Engine tap is going to be all the way to your left, fuel information to your right, but ultimately to adjust what is on that digital display, there are steering wheel mounted controls found on the left side of the steering wheel. It's going to give you things like when you need your next oil change, there's your navigation information up there, there's trip A, trip B of course, outside temperature, the list goes on, and of course the digital speedometer as well. So pretty much everything you could possibly want on the digital portion of the gauges there. But so then make your way to overall interior quality here, power moonroof is going to come standard on every single trim level across the board love that overhead sunglass holder also coming standard that comes with a conversation mirror so i can actually see the rear passengers like a school bus driver would be able to do so that is pretty cool tri-zone climate control coming standard again so both driver passenger can set their own temperatures and the rear passengers as well home lane controls to up to three different garage doors found in the bottom portion of that rear view mirror and by the way that rear view mirror is an auto dimming rear view mirror so if somebody has their high beams on behind you it's going to automatically dim them so it's not going to bother you whatsoever illuminated beverage holders this is pretty cool coming with the trail sport and elite trim levels and be an led lighting coming with the trail sport and elite trims as well the difference being the trail sport is going to give you an amber color whereas the elite is going to give you a white color for that ambient led LED lighting wireless phone charger actually coming standard for all trim levels across the board it's going to be located directly in front of the cup holders and speaking of in front of the cup holders just above that wireless phone charger you got a little bit of storage there there is a 12 volt power outlet also a usb charging port you got your dual cup holders of course and within the center kind of cargo area you will find another 12 volt power outlet another usb charging port and an absolute ton 
of storage if you wanted to put some stuff in there. But overall, I like the gloss black accents that you can find right around the shifter as well as on the doors, just about the passenger side glove box. So I am a fan of that because I know it's easy to clean. I've had that in my vehicles before. So that's not too bad, but for the most part, everything's kind of finished more on the minimalist side of things. So no complaints from me though, I'll say that. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen here. And so eight inch color touchscreen display is going to come standard across the board. That's gonna come with Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, factory navigation system is going to come on the trail sport and elite trims you do have some really cool looking clock display options I always like playing around with that honda is kind of known for that little added feature there so i think that's pretty cool radio information can be found up there as well of course and so when it comes to the sound systems for the passport you will find seven speakers with a subwoofer for the exl and trail sport but then if you were to go with the elite you're going to get a 10 speaker sound system with 540 watts and yet again another subwoofer so have Having said that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. Actually, really, really, really good. Crystal clear. I could tell there was a ton of bass in that as well. So that is actually a really, really good sound system for the Passport, without a doubt. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Passport in reverse, you will find your rear view camera for all trim levels with three views, including you guys can see those buttons at the bottom left-hand corner. It's gonna give you a couple different views. But anyways, that is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, front side, side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system and then honda sensing coming standard on all trim levels across the board as well including a collision mitigation braking system road departure mitigation system adaptive cruise control lane keep assist forward collision warning and lane departure warning then as well but also coming standard a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert as well and so Overall, when it comes to my final thoughts, I am a fan of the refresh. I thought this before looked a little bit too similar to the Pilot, and I thought they needed to differentiate a little bit, and that's what they kind of did for the 2022 model year. So I do like the new look of it. Plenty of cargo space in this thing, even without it being as big as the Pilot. You still got 77.7 .7 cubic feet, which is still plenty of space. Nice acceleration. That is one thing Honda always gets right, is the acceleration in their vehicles. They got really quick vehicles that don't necessarily have to be like this thing but it is so i was a huge fan of that as far as room for improvement goes i checked iihs it's not a top safety pick for the 2022 model year so i wanted to make note of that honestly still in the end i think i would still go for the pilot just because you do have more cargo space and you also have better braking which is always a big thing for me as well but anyways let me know what you guys think of the new passport in the comments section below that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media if you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in the new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.